Uh, New York lobbyists aiding and abetting the climate crisis. This is an amazing story. It's over at The Guardian by uh, Ava Sasani. And uh, the re new research reveals that dozens of New York universities, hospitals, museums, and nonprofits. Now, they only did this in New York State, but uh, it's, I'm sure it's true of every state in the union. Um, dozens of these universities, hospitals, museums, and nonprofits are employing lobbyists who also work for fossil fuel companies, which is to say, uh, which some say is blatantly aiding and abetting the climate crisis. Uh, this is a new report from F Minus, which is a database of state level lobbying disclosures released last year. And Little Sis, a project created by the uh, nonprofit corporate and government accountability watchdog Public Accountability Initiative. Uh, New York University, for example, uh, which has uh, you know, a $5 billion endowment, uh, shares its lobbyists with six fossil fuel companies. Tobacco Free Kids Action Fund works with the same New York-based lobbying firm as Coke Industries, known for its uh, prolific history of climate denial and pollution of American air and water. Uh, the New Museum, featuring endangered plants and animals, employs the same lobbying firm as BP America. Uh, last year, I'm, I'm quoting now from this, from this article in The Guardian, last year, Brown and Weintraub, one of the top paid lobbying firms in New York, helped the American Petroleum Institute oppose the creation of a super fund that would generate $3 billion annually for disaster recovery and climate resiliency projects. Brown and Weintraub also works with Google, which last year ramped up its public commitment to environmental causes. So, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll hire these lobbyists who are working against the climate, and then we're going to proclaim that we're in favor of the climate. It just doesn't make any sense, right? In 2022 alone, Google shared lobbying firms with fossil fuel clients in 17 states. Nationwide, a whopping 1,500 lobbyists are working on behalf of fossil fuel companies while simultaneously representing hundreds of Democratic cities, universities, and tech giants. F minus confirmed that there is no provision in the New York lobbying laws that prohibits a lobbyist from working both for and against a bill at the same time. But you've got to wonder, you know, if you, if the, if you hire a lobbying firm to uh, promote your idea that uh, there should be, uh, you know, caps on fossil fuel production or something like that, and that same lobbying firm is working for BP arguing that there should be no caps on fossil fuel production, uh, just for example. What does, you know, what does that mean? I mean, what, how, how do you do with, how do you deal with that? How, how, on the one hand, on the other hand, you know, the lobbying firms would say, hey, you know, like lawyers, you know, I, you, you wouldn't go to a law firm and say, you know, I would like to hire you to do my will, but you did defend a murderer a couple of years ago, and I'm no fan of murder. Except that lobbying is, a re is kind of a very different thing than just, you know, being a law firm. Although a lot of these lobbying firms actually started out as law firms. A lot of them actually still are law firms. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I don't know, it's, it's going to be uh, uh, one of those, how is this going to turn out, you know, things. Uh, but I, I'm really pleased that this, this organization, Little Sis, is, is drawing attention to this. Um, lobbying firms that are promoting the destruction of our planet, frankly, should not get another nickel, in my opinion from any group that's aligned with uh, the Democratic Party or any group that's aligned with the idea of, you know, we're in favor of life on Earth and we're opposed to destroying life on Earth.